Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And we are here at our place in Fort Worth on Eagle Mountain Lake. And as I've said before, for those of you that uh, missed the first uh, four days of the week, we usually do this over at, at, at our, our place in uh, southwest Arkansas. But we've had a, we're doing a lot of remodeling over there and just not, not remodeling as such, but repair and and so forth, and we a lot of. In other words, there's a lot of work over there. Yeah. So we're coming over here. So they just then they didn't get all of the steel and everything in there in time to redo it. Anyway, so we wound up here on the shores of Eagle Mountain Lake, and and uh, our, our ministry headquarters is up the hill there, and our home that Gloria designed and so forth is right behind all this. Father, we thank you again today and thank you for this great week. We just praise you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we, we, it's amazing the things that are in your word and it's so glorious. We're grateful. The revelation that comes from your word. And we praise you for it and we ascribe all of the glory for every word that's said and every deed that's done to the matchless name of Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Amen. Those of you that have received your healing this, this week, let us know. Praise God, because that's, we're very interested in that. And those of you that have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want to know about these yes, things. Amen. amen. Celebrate. It's very important. We, yeah, we do. We celebrate these things. Glory to God. And now, we began talking about this last Passover meal before Jesus went to the cross. John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17th chapters of John are all there. And we talked about these things. Now, uh, in the 14th chapter, let's look at this again. In the 10th verse, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Now look at, I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. Verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it's it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you. He will be in you. He was referring to the day of Pentecost. They didn't know that, they, they're just taking it one minute at a time. And, but they had to go through all of that. They watched him, they watched him be hung on that cross and then he, then he appeared to them, glory to God. But listen to what he said. The Father that dwells in me, he does the works. I'll pray the Father and he will send you another comforter, even the spirit of truth and so forth. Amen. Now, Page one. <laughs> In the beginning, God. Isn't that good? In the beginning, God created the heaven 
and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. There was light. And God saw the light that it was good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's the same spirit. That's the same spirit Jesus was talking about. That's the same spirit that came inside your heart the minute you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the same spirit, praise God, that came on the day of Pentecost as a rushing mighty wind. Hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Speaking in a language and yielding to God in a language you have never learned is the gateway to the supernatural. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, and that happened. It needs to happen to you, and it can happen to you today. Jesus said, you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How, how much, much more, more shall your father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? So ask him. Well, I just don't start that. I just don't know. Read that in the book of Luke. I'm not going to do you studying for you. Look it up for yourself. Amen. <laughs> Find it. Jesus said that. And the Spirit, they spoke as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now, Gloria and I didn't know any better. <laughs> we, we, they, we went uh, uh, to an, a meeting over in East Texas in uh, <laughs> January of 1963. We got, we got married in 62, and then we accepted the Lord in 62. And in 1963, we went to a meeting over there. And Christian Medical Foundation of Dr. Yeah. Bill William Standish Reed. Oh, bless his heart. And uh, he's in heaven today. He and Kay are in heaven today. And what marvelous, mar oh, he's just such a, he was a board certified surgeon. They may be watching this today. <laughs> he's just a full of God. Anyway, so we went over there to that. We wanted to hear him and we went. Well, he gave him an invitation for people to come up and receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I turned around, my mother and dad right behind it. I said, is that something we ought to have? She said, you ought to have that. I just grabbed Gloria by the hand and um, went up there. Well, I'd heard of it because my mother's sister, uh, my mother, my, bro my dad's sister had 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 been baptized in the spirit. They lived out in California. I'd heard of it. But anyway, she said they ought to have that. So I just grabbed Gloria by the hand. We just took off up there. And it was old time Pentecost. I mean, all the women praying for glory and all the men are praying for me. Hang on, brother, let go. You know, no instructions, whatever. I didn't know what they wanted me to do. <laughs> just stood there. And I liked every bit of it, but I didn't know what they wanted. So, and they're over there praying for Gloria. And um, they gave up on me. So Bill said, come on, go, let's go pray for Gloria. And I said, okay. So I walked up right behind her and all the women were just praying and going over Gloria. And, and he said, lay your hand on her. I said, no. I was standing like that. Can you imagine that? Stupid comes to mind. But, no, I was just timid about it. I, I didn't know what was going on. He said, lay your hand on her. I said, no. He said, lay your hand on her. I just put my hand right in the back. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, Lord. oh God. And we were in a hotel uh, meeting room and they, they had set up a little platform in there and one of about to die. But they had chairs up there. And I just stumbled up there and just flopped down in that chair. Oh, 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 God. And he just touched me right there and he said, 
No more English. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. But well, see, I didn't know you wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I didn't know you had to struggle at it. I didn't know you had to frown. You don't. It's a gift. Jesus is the gift to the world, and the Holy Spirit is the gift to the church for supernatural power for, for witness and ministry. I didn't know any of that. I just knew I just knew I was happily saved, and now something big had happened to me. So I had to go back to Little Rock because I had to be in work the next morning. And it's just over there in East Texas, so it's just not very far to Little Rock. And this little Piper airplane I was flying, no autopilot, it was just, just a little, little trainer type airplane. And I was just flying along there. January, cold, an airplane loves to fly in cold weather because the air is denser. And I was just sitting there, just flying along, watching this thing, and that, this star bright. And I said out loud, I said, Lord, I don't know what all I know about that, what happened to me back there. And I don't know where I got the word anoint. They, they, they must have said that while they were oh, yeah. reading the scripture or something. I said, I don't know what all I know about that, but I'm gonna say some of those words again. Well, now you can tell right there, I didn't come, I, I didn't come, come out of it with a background of it. I'm gonna say some of those words again. If there's anything to it, anoint it. There you are. Now, no, no, hold up. And here it came. Oh, man. Ah, I just sat there and prayed in the Spirit just as hard and fast as I could go. I'm just loving every second of it. And I'm thinking in my mind, uh, now, you know, Lord, uh, I, can, I can see the lights of Little Rock up there and I'm, I'm going to have to talk to these people. <laughs> and, and I... And I just stopped there. And I, and, you know, you can pray in tongues and think at the same time. And I thought, you're going to have to do something with my, my words or you're going to have to do something with their ears because i got to talk to somebody. And I said, Little Rock Approach. I said, hey, that came out all right. <laughs> Little Rock Approach Control. And so anyway, and I got on the ground. I got out of that little airplane, and I mean, I, t I blessed that airplane, I blessed the ground, I blessed the hangar, I blessed the car, I, everything. I was just talking in the spirit just as hard and fast as I could, just going and going and going and going and going and going and going, and I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it today. Praise God. And it's easy, and it'll bless you, and the Spirit of the Lord will come up on the inside of you, and you will understand things more than you ever did before. That's what I said in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It is the same spirit when Jesus came up to the tomb of Lazarus and he groaned in the spirit and he said, I know you always hear me. He groaned in the spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead. It's the same. There it is. There it is right there on page one. Chapter one, in the beginning, God. Jesus said, God is a spirit and they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. How do you do that? Well, you worship him in the spirit by praying, praying with the natural mind, praying in other tongues. I mean, Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and read it. It's important. It's got a whole chapter devoted to it. Amen. And just pray and sing in the Spirit and worship Him in the Spirit. And these, he, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are alive. Amen. Is. So these words are spirit and they are alive. I just flipped this over. I just did the 139th Psalm. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting, my uprising. Thou understands my thought afar off. You've compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there's not a word in my tongue, O Lord, uh, 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 that you know all together. And you've beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Glory to God. That's the same Lord. It's the same spirit. It's the same God. 
and he is Lord and he is God and I'm glad and let there be light. I don't know what happened to that, but who cares? We just praise God for it. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God. Now, let me introduce to you the Spirit of power. Now, when, they, when he said, let there be light, he actually said, light be. Light was. Now, that's not sunlight. That didn't have several days later when he created the sun. Now, in 24 hours, since light travels at 186,000 miles a second, 16 billion, 94 million, 764,800 miles of universe. That and is it pace, is it? still expanding at the speed of light because of the words of our God. Now, let me point out something here to you. Let me, let me look at it again. Because this is big. Now notice, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, the spirit of God is always moving. He's always moving. But God had to say it for it to come to pass. That is faith. Jesus said it in the 11th chapter of Mark. Let's go over there and look at it. The classic teaching on Mark in the 11th chapter. From Mark in the 11th chapter. Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. The cross reference says, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. That's what God did. Now the spirit of God is there. He's in you. He's around you. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord, stop right now and say, Lord, I, I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. Come into my heart. Read the 10th chapter of Romans. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's what's so important about faith. You believe it in your heart and you say it with your mouth. Therefore I say, so Jesus turned around and did it. What things soever you <laughs> desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. When you pray, believe it. I haven't seen anything yet, but when I pray, I believe it. When I pray, I believe it. I believe it right now. But here's the key to it. Find the promises in the word that cover your situation. Pray the prayer with his word. Pray the word of God. If it's healing in your body you need, go, go to these healing scriptures. And, and I, I've done that and do do that. And uh, you go over here then to... Uh, 1 Peter 2, but the 24th verse says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. But well, now wait a minute. There's 23 verses ahead of that. 
There's a lot of correction here. Laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisies, and envies, and evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be ye to have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And you're just, you're chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Well, you just stop and meditate on that a little while. Well, I never mounted anything much in the world, but look at this. I'm a royal priest. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and you begin to believe you're worth something. And you begin to say it in the name of Jesus. I belong to Jesus and I'm, I'm somebody. He doesn't love me because I'm somebody. I'm somebody because I found out he loved me. Amen. And he can make, a, he can make somebody out of nobody. <laughs> just like he did glory in me. I mean, we just little nobodies and we found out about it. And he made somebody out of us. And we just kept growing and kept growing and kept growing. And then somebody found out about it. And then next thing you know, we were on the radio. And then the next thing you know, we were on doing a little dab of television. And the next thing you know, we wound up uh, on a network. And well, the next thing you know, I mean, it didn't take 50 years to do it, but <laughs> we've been in this ministry 55 years. <clears throat> and it was just step by step faith project after the next, after the next, after the next, just believing God, believing God and meet the needs of the people. My father in the faith, Oral Roberts, I, he, told, he just drilled that into me. Kenneth, meet the needs of the people. He's the one that taught me how to write a partner letter. And he said, you don't write that letter to get your needs met. You write that letter to help them get their needs met. He said, meet the needs of the people. That's all you're for is to meet their needs. You help meet their needs spiritually. You help meet their, their needs financially. You help meet their needs physically. You just get in there and help them meet their needs by the word of God and by faith in his name. Hallelujah. Faith is very simple. But people make a problem out of it. The reason is getting the physical feelings and the mind all mixed up in there. And um, there is something that sounds like faith, looks like faith, but it is not faith. It's mental assent. Oh, I believe the word. Yes, it is the infallible word of the living God. I have faith in God. Yes, oh, I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. I just don't see why it doesn't come to pass. <laughs> see, I mean, the mind believes it, but there's no faith in that. It's mental assent to it. Yeah. Well, you need to mentally ascend to the fact that it is, but it's not mind, spirit, and body. It's not body, spirit, and mind. No, you have to go to 1 Thessalonians and you'll find that the apostle Paul said, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body, all three, starting with the spirit. The spirit man is the never dying man. A spirit never ceases to exist. Never. Whether you accepted Jesus or not. The apostle Paul wrote this, he said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The same thing is true for a person that has never accepted Jesus, except to be absent from the body and the destination is different. It's, hell is just as real. Did you know God created hell? That's how bad it is. He, didn't, he, never, he did not create, Jesus said hell was created for the devil and his angels. His fallen angels. Yes, 
his fallen angel. But men that, and women that follow him, that's where they wind up. Anyway, we're out of time. And uh, it's a blessed thing, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So we'll be back in just a moment. In 2022, join Kenneth Copeland at these upcoming KCM events. June 9th through 11, don't miss the Fargo Victory Campaign in North Dakota. August 1 through 6, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. And October 27 through 29, come to the Omaha Victory Campaign in Nebraska. KCM events are free to attend. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information. Hello, I'm Spencer Nordyke. Thank you for joining us this week on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Today is offering day on the broadcast and we want to give you an opportunity to sow into the word you've heard. The foundation scripture for offering day is Galatians chapter six, verse six and seven, which says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. You can sow into this ministry and reap from the goodness of God because the gospel is going into all the earth and you are a part of that. As you sow today, you're activating miracles in the realm of the supernatural. And as you do that, that flow is beginning to happen in your life where answers and miracles and revelation is coming back to you. Partners, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for your prayers and faithful giving. And it's because of you and the faithfulness of God that KCM has been able to preach the uncompromised word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle on every available voice. The good news of the gospel has touched families and generations around the world. The Lord called Brother Copeland to preach and teach faith, and that's what he's done for the last 55 years. When you partner with KCM through your prayers and financial support, you're sowing into a ministry that specializes in using their faith. Let me pray over you. Father, in Jesus' name, as people give today, I thank you that they're activating the flow of miracles in their life. Father, we release that flow. We speak to those seeds and say, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of God that is flowing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for being with us today. This is Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. I don't miss next week now. So it's, it, it, I, you understand what I'm saying? No. <laughs> you, we need you and you need us. Praise God. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember this, God loves you and we, we love, love you, you, and Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. To give by text, text the letters KCM to 36609.